Hello everyone, today I'll show you how to create a paper plane from scratch. We'll start by modeling the paper plane and then move on to creating a short animation for it. You can use this technique in countless projects including real client work. And if you're interested in creating smooth animations in After Effects and want to learn everything from the basics to the mastery, I recommend checking out my Motion Hero course. The link is in the top right corner of the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss a new video. Okay, without further ado, let's start. For starters, I make a solid. I set its width to 200 and its height to 800 and its color to white. If you pay attention, the wings of this paper plane are triangles. So I have to turn this solid into a triangle. To do that, I select the solid layer and then double click on the rectangle tool. By doing this, I created a mask that's the same size as the solid. Then I select the solid and delete this point. As you can see, the solid is now a triangle. After that, I have to move the anchor point of this solid to the top. To do that, in transform, I set the anchor point to zero. I move the layer to the center and make it 3D. Then rename it. I duplicate it and rotate the duplicate 180 degrees on the X axis creating both wings of the plane. Then I rotate the right wing minus 3 degrees on the z-axis and do the same for the other wing. After that, I duplicate the second wing and then rename it to body 1. I hit R and set the X orientation to 270 instead. I set the Z rotation to 0, X rotation to 3, and Y rotation to 12. I duplicate this layer, press R and set the X rotation to minus 3 and Y rotation to minus 12. Now the paper plane is complete. I make the color of the body layers darker so it would look better. To have better control over the paper plane, I put all of them into a new comp by hitting Ctrl Shift C and name it paper plane. Once that's done, let's animate it. I make it 3D and enable this star option. Let me make a background. I save its color to blue and click on make comp size, then I hit OK. Alright, now let's work on the animation. But before that, I rename this comp to paper plane. I have to scale it down a bit, so I set the scale to 60. Then I press P and change its position. You can change its rotation here or use these axes in order to do that smoothly. Next, I create a text. I type new post and move it to the center. I choose Arial for the font, italic, and size 150 which seems to work well. I open the position of the comp and create a keyframe for it. I want it to go from here to here. So I go to the first second and move it here. Then I go to the second two and move the paper plane there. Then in the third second, I put it here. And finally, I set the last position at the second four. Now let's work on tweaking the path of animation. I pick up the pen tool, then I click on these points. As you can see, the handles of the points appear. I refine it further. It looks much better. Now let's see how the animation looks so far. Let me put the text layer below the paper plane. Next, I adjust the timing of the keyframes. On the second keyframe, I want the paper plane to slow down here and then increase its speed. To achieve this, I make the keyframe easy ease. In order to have a longer pause, I right click on it and go to the keyframe velocity. Then I check the continuous option and set the influence to 90 and speed to 600. I set this influence to 90 as well and hit OK. I think moving this keyframe slightly to the right is better. 
It doesn't need to slow down until the end of the path. I just have to make the last keyframe easy ease, because I want the paper plane to land and stop at the end. I want to increase the influence of this keyframe to 80. Let's take a look at the results. As you can see, the paper plane accelerates up to this point, then it slows down, and then its speed remains consistent for the rest of the animation. In order not to have any pause between these two keyframes, I right-click on this keyframe and click on Row Across Time. Let's see the results. I feel like the speed of the paper plane is slightly slow from here to here. To fix that, I move this keyframe to the left a bit. Let's check it out. It's very good. I also want it to be faster in the last movement, so I move the last keyframe to the left. Let's check it out one more time. Okay, after making the animation path, now let's move on to fixing the rotation. I press Shift R, then go to the beginning of the timeline and create a keyframe for its orientation. Here, rotate it on the X axis a little bit so it aligns with the path of the animation. I go to the second keyframe and rotate it in both the Z and X axis. Right here, I rotate it a little bit so it would look like it's flying over the text. Here again, I rotate it a little bit. I also rotate it in the Y axis. I continue this process so that the paper plane rotates to follow the path. Now to give it some depth, as if the paper plane is getting farther, I create keyframes for its scale. I create a keyframe for the scale here. And here I set the scale to 35. And for the last keyframe, I set it to 70. Alright, let's check out the results. I move this keyframe to the left. Now check it out. Then I make it easy. I make the final keyframe of a scale easy ease and move it to the right and move the initial keyframe to the left. Let's check it out. I think it looks amazing. Since this video is a tutorial, I won't go into extensive details, but feel free to tweak the animation further to achieve even better results. To make it look better, I create a shadow for it. To do that, I create a black solid layer and hide it. Then I pick up the pen tool and create a mask like this. I make it visible and set its feather to 12. I decrease its opacity. To move the shadow along with the paper plane, I press M and create a keyframe for the mask path and put it where the final keyframe is. Then I adjust the mask path to match the movement of the paper plane. For the shadow to start appearing as if the paper plane is getting closer to the ground, I create a keyframe for the opacity and move it forward. Then I create another keyframe before that and set it to zero. As you can see, the shadow is now done and complete. Let's see how it looks so far. Alright, looks very good. You can work on the details yourself to get even better results. And for the text animation, I've already covered this animation in another tutorial, which you can watch by clicking the link above. And if you're interested in learning about these speed lines, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to learn more about motion design techniques, I recommend checking out this playlist. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.